started working on this in 2013. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So wonderful. Yay. Tell us a little about the process and what has changed, i.e. improved, I hope, to, to allow you to finally complete the film. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of factors. <laughs> the first one is our incredible investors and supporters are in the audience today. Thank you so much. Um, so Isa and I actually met here when I was on my birthday trip with my cousin Hoda. She she took me and she said, hey, you need to watch this, mo this, this movie, Dirty Packy Laundry. Sure, one Sorry, woman play. one woman play. <laughs> and this one woman play was so fantastic and amazing. Um, I watched this woman transfer her, herself from six different characters from a six-year-old to a 50-year-old. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm seeing myself on um, theater. I really want to see it on the screen. So I asked her to do it, so we did it. But then the process took, <laughs> but then, and it took four years to write this script. And um, after that, it was actually really important. I think you speak more about it. Like uh, in 2016, Trump was elected, and we thought it was really important to kind of include that as a, as a background of what we as Muslims go through every day in our lives. And so by that time, it was like 2016, 17, when he was elected, and um, we finalized the film um, script, and they were able to shoot. So we shot, then we ran out of money, <laughs> and then we raised money, shot again, edited for a year, shot again, edited for a year, then COVID hit, edited for another year, and here we are. <laughs> Hooray! That's a long journey, but it's not, it's not such an unusual one for filmmakers. So I need to know, Isa, who, who has the biggest lady balls here? I think I do. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you can probably tell looking at me that I'm not um, necessarily your target audience. But I and everyone else, I think, is your target audience, right? Yeah, I mean, we actually definitely wrote this from the mainstream audience, which was you, to be honest. And then, um, <laughs> the white. But um, I've actually been extremely surprised by the feedback from, obviously, our own communities. Um, usually our own communities don't enjoy our stuff <laughs> when we do it. So this has been really great because it's, it's impacted so many um, people from around, no matter what ethnic background they are. So it's been really great, because they can see themselves on screen, no matter what, because everybody wants love, life, and career. And they can laugh. I don't want to stop talking. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Isa and Selena, you can, you can also chime in on, on being, being the wonderful sister stars of this film. Wonderful. <laughs> can you talk a little about the casting? How did you? Oh my gosh, so the incredible Selena Qureshi, everyone. Yeah. yeah, so it's really funny. So we were, it's, casting process was so difficult. You guys, I wrote this, and in the play, I play all the characters, including Kala, the mom, you know, and I was like, maybe I'll pull like an Eddie Murphy and put on a little suit and play them. No, but then your man was like, no, I said, no, we're not gonna do that. So, <laughs> so we didn't. Um, but then when we were writing for years, I was pretty sure I was gonna play Amira. It's a character I love. She's really funny. I do comedy. That's my thing. She's built to be funny, whereas Sam is the serious straight person. And all the characters around her are really funny. So um, we got when we got to casting, I was like, oh man, I just had this epiphany. I was like, man, my whole life, my entire career, I watch my TV reel. I'm either playing, uh, you know, uh, Arab person with an accent. I'm playing a South Asian with an accent. I'm speaking Urdu. I'm speaking Arabic. I'm always foreign, you know, because that's the box I get put in. And I was like, man, I don't want to put myself in that box. So we were like, let's, let's be really mindful and let's cast somebody who actually speaks that way instead of asking an American actor to put on an accent. Um, and then we are amazing casting director. One of them is here, Mia Kusumano. Mia. She is amazing. I mean, Mia and Megan Rafferty went above and beyond, hired them for everything. I don't know how they found us. They found Hala, they found the Led Bay. And I was like, I have been in love with Alette my whole life, growing up, watching her play the mom and everything we've ever seen. Um, and you know, of course, Shana's Treasury and, and all the supporting cast, uh, a lot of them are our friends from New York. New York actors were amazing, as you've seen. And then Selena, I have to tell the story. Selena came in. I have a background with that too. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> Selena came in to play Maya, who plays Shah, his like, hot girlfriend. Oh wait, and can I just add that that day, <laughs> 
I had to hype myself up in the mirror and I put on red lipstick and I put on boots and I was like, you are gonna go in and you are gonna be hot and you are gonna get this role. And then I went in. And then she <laughs> came and in. And saw right through it. Yes. <laughs> and, and actually it was in man was like, and I was like, oh my gosh, she'd be a really great Miriam. So we just gave her like on the spot these sides to read for Miriam and like she killed she it. She killed it. She, she was, was like, the only choice, right? Right, I was like, um, Selena, I need you to be awkward. She's like, I got it. And she was like, really awkward. And I did, I walked out and I read the script and I went, oh, okay, they saw right through me. Amazing, <laughs> great. Because that's how you roll. <laughs> nice. So, Roy, Paul, Anne, congratulations on this great film. Tell us, tell us quickly how you came aboard and why you decided to do that. So, um, I met Isa in about 2012, 2013. Um, I was trying to actually put together a women's talk show for the Pakistani um, audience here in America and also in Pakistan. But then I always tell the story, apparently the, the show was too intelligent uh, for the audiences because a lot of the talk shows are very like gossip and fashion, so that didn't end up happening. But I also went and saw Isa perform her play and had just loved it and always been following it. And so then Isa and Iman came to me right before, I think in- I think it was two weeks before. One was it two our, weeks? I thought it was like two days. It was like literally two weeks before and one of our investors literally ghosted us. And then we were like, oh my gosh, that was our biggest investor. We have to start filming in two more weeks. And we're like, who do I know? Who do I know? And I was like, I know Anne. I know Anne's interested in film. Yeah, we were so lucky she came And then Anne was like, she read the script. She's like, yeah, let's do it. And I'm like, I know. What? And, and she said, And then she just film. pulled the strings every single day. Like, she's yeah, literally yeah. the exe best executive producer of life. Yeah. Just bring it through. City with zero plan. We didn't know where the actors were gonna change their clothes. We had no trailers. We had no money for them. And then Anne just like came in and like fixed everything. Yes. Bravo. An angel investor we all need. Yes. And these two gentlemen. Yes. Uh, hey. Uh, see, I'm Paul Uh For me, it was very simple because Iman and I went to film school together, and we've been longtime collaborators. And I, I don't know, when was it? Like uh, maybe... 2006. Yeah, it's been a while. We're old. So old. <laughs> uh, but, but like basically one day, I, I live in LA and a man goes, you need to go see this one woman play. It's so good. But I go, like, I don't really do that. Go! And so, so I, I go and I, it's uh, Isa's uh, play. And I go like, it's really amazing. And then uh, two years or so later, she goes, Paul, I need you to produce, you know, uh, my movie. And I go... Okay, I'm not a producer, but like the project is so you know it's so compelling, and you know, and I and I can't say no to a man. So like you know, so here I am, like you know, how many years later? So she gave you no choice. I, I, yes, I he loves. But you like how he acts? With him? I'm just like yelling at him all the time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, actually, Paul was a, such a he helped on the script phase all the way through and kind of pulled everything through with the entire film since um, on year five. Yeah. And that's and it. Then, and then Paul and Roy. And Roy. Yeah. Hi, I'm Roy. Um, I, I, I joined the latest. I think I'm the last person that joined the and team. I have to say, yeah. I mean, the film is complete, and you're watching it today in large part because of Roy, our That's editor. That's not true. It, it's mean, all of us. All of us, but Roy yeah. really pulled it through. Yeah. No. Actually, I'll, I'll thank you for that, but I'll also mirror that back to uh, our crew and some of our cast that are here. If you have a second, if you could stand up so we can all see you that yes, you're here. Yes, please do. Please. Oh, that'd be great. time her and Paul when I was going through a lot of stuff they were editing I mean it was just and then Paul, Roy was like we got some more in us team and me and Isa are like dead on the ground we're like we have nothing and then they yes. took it yes I, I love editing I, that's something that I really enjoy I used to be an editor when I was a, a kid um, um, but during the time that I met uh, Iman, Isa, and Paul, um, I had gone through a breakup and I needed love and, you know, laughter in my life. And this film brought it to me during the set. <laughs> and, I, and it went through That's all moving. the way till now. And uh, I just, the set was so much fun to be there. I made some friends. I learned a lot about um, something that I didn't know enough about, um, you know, about American Muslims. I grew up in Turkey which is a very different experience. And just 
being a part of this uh, crew, I learned a lot, and uh, and I'm just proud of the film. And um, but you know, we've been on this for eight years, I guess, in total, or nine years. Um, I've been on it for four, but the the work really starts now. It's going to be in the programming. It's going to be in the distribution. Hopefully, you'll see this film thirty years down the road. Hopefully, some children will see it then too. So I'm just really proud to be a part of it. Let's go to you and, oh my gosh, now, now we've got, okay. And I see that several, several of you are frustrated writers because I have novels here on a, on a single card. Congrats. I saw myself so much in this film, so thank you very much. Curious to know, how did you think we can help bridge the gap? How do you think we can help bridge the gap between our generation and our parents? Any advice? That's a really great question. You know, we were in um, Cincinnati, and um, we actually had an older gentleman um, who stood up and was an, an uncle, when we call him, quote unquote uncle, and he said, you know, um, I am like Khala, and it was really important that we put that in there and put the realness. I'm like Khala, and my children call me out, and they call me out correctly so that I know what is right and what, I'm, what is told. So I personally think, and you know, the same thing with my children and my mother, um, is that in order to bridge a gap is, is through education and calling it out. One thing that we were always scared about, and I actually added this in the film and ad-libbed it, I told Isa to say it, is that when there's racism in your, in your household, which there is constantly, you have to call it out. You can't just be like, ah, oh, that's really funny. That's not how it is. You have to call it out and you have to stop it because that's the only way that they're gonna learn from it. That's personally my opinion. Of course, in a respectful way, I know we're brown and respect is really important, of course, but um, it has to be called out, my opinion. Do you have Great question. Isa, what was the most challenging part of adapting your one woman show into the screenplay of Americanish? Who asked that question? It's good. It's like touching my soul. Oh, Jason, because <laughs> he's a writer. That's why. It's a great question. Yeah. No, it was definitely very challenging. You know, because I think as a uh, writer and as a young writer too, I started writing this eight years ago, and it was a, really the solo play was the first thing I ever wrote, and this is pretty much the second thing I ever wrote all those years ago, and since then I've written quite a bit, but. It was really hard, like you're married to so many of your own ideas. And like as a writer, you really have to learn to like kill your darlings, right? Um, so I think it was just um, learning also. It was such a big learning curve for me to uh, adapt something. My whole, my career like started off in theater and then my training was originally a lot of like, was it just theater? And uh, it was around the time I met a man around eight years, seven years ago, I started kind of shifting more into film and TV. But when we met, I wasn't that experienced. I've done a lot since then, but so it was hard. It was very hard because, you know, we would just write a lot and rewrite a lot. We wrote and rewrote for like years and it takes a toll on you. And I think I've learned a lot definitely in the process and I think I'm a better writer for it. Yeah, and we both, I mean, I was a short writer and, and Isa was a first time writer. So we had this plan where we'd write three short films and then put it together. And that was the worst mistake ever because <laughs> it did not flow together. And so we just, and then finally it was like, okay, well, there's two different voices. And then Isa just kind of took over. And then I gave my harsh notes, as Zoe says, my harsh notes about it. And Isa just kept rewriting and rewriting. And she's super talented. So it was really great. Your harsh note is usually, it's a hard no. Hard no. Hard no. <laughs> the buck stops here. <laughs> to all, I thank you for a wonderful film. The scenes of New York were so vital. That's really, yeah. Especially when we start following Amira across the street and everyone's chasing her. To the director, what prompted the idea for the film? Uh, looking for dreams in America or marriage? Was there a specific reaction to the Trump presidency, which I think um, has now been answered? Would you like to well, I mean, the, elaborate? Sure. I mean, the purpose of the film is to create um, narratives about strong American Muslim women, period. There's four different Muslim women on screen here that are my friends, that are my mother, um, you know, sisters, cousins that we never see on television, right? We, we said this before, this was the first. First are always have it the hardest, right? Because they have to break through. We make the path for the rest of them. But um, it's, that is the main, my goal as a, you know, one of the first hijabi Muslim filmmakers has always been to create um, a narrative about Muslim women that is not docile, that is not timid, that's not hypersexualized, that we're real Muslim women, um, American, that have dreams and wants. And that was 
the catalyst of this film. And that's what I saw in her play. And I was like, great, we just kind of take that and roll. And so that was really important. And yeah, we did answer the question about Trump, but you know, one thing that we got during the test is like, man, that's way too on the nose. And we're like, no, it's really important that people know that that's exactly how he said and how it affect us. And we actually had an experience in Arkansas where um, a white Trump supporter watched the film, really loved it, and she didn't realize that that's how his words affect us, which is so surprising, right? You think that it's so obvious, but your our worldviews are so different. And that's the purpose of film, right? Is to create art and to create and share experiences. And I'll just add for the Desi audience here, so the inspiration for the play, which is where the characters come from, was actually Mirza Ghalib. It's a Hazaro Khwahishayan si Kehar Khwahish Pedam Nikle, which is you have a thousand wishes and you wish that they could all come true. And I think that's what all of these women are kind of striving for. They have all these dreams and wishes that they're trying to attain and it's very hard. And you might get that dream and it looks a little bit different than you thought it would. Pay to the stars. Yes. To the stars, were you looking specifically for Muslim roles? And what was the most difficult part of each of your roles? <laughs> um, actually, I was not. I had never seen or read a script like this before. I was constantly up for roles that you know, talked about me being brown and I had to put on an accent or be the terrorist sister and plead with my father. And honestly, I got to a point where I was sick of it. And when I read this script, it, it brought me to tears because I finally saw women just like me. And I mean, it has shaped me as a Muslim woman in this industry on what I look for, on what I accept and what I expect on set. Um, and it has inspired me. And um, I have a younger sister who's an actress as well. And she's turning 16 in a few weeks. And um, I, I'm so happy that she's here tonight and saw this film. Because I don't want anyone to ever have to go through some of the struggles that we went through. Yeah, without having any representation of. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I. I grew up thinking that who I am was not okay. I would hide that fact that I'm Pakistani or, and Muslim. People would ask me and I would avoid it. And I would say, oh, what do you think I am? And then hop around it. And um, I, I, was, I was called a terrorist on the playground. And so from a very young age, I had thought, okay, who I am is wrong. And I'm, I, I can't be considered beautiful because in media we only see, we only saw women portrayed as beautiful and being pursued by the man as, you know, the blonde, tall woman. Actually, I was told, not to go on a tangent, when I auditioned for Maya, that, oh, well, of course you didn't get it. They want the tall, skinny blonde. And I remember being crushed. But then you watch this film, and it's led by women like you. And it, it really makes a huge difference. And I'm so proud to be a part of it. I think the next question actually feeds into that, and I'm sure that one of the answers really should be, take your parents to see this film. Yeah. First of all, I want to say I love this film. This is the film America has been waiting for. My question is, my passion and goal is to become an actress. My Muslim Desi parents are in, uh, as intensely opposed to it as I am immensely passionate about it. Any advice on how to navigate with family that really so vehemently uh, opposes performing arts? Don't tell them like I did. <laughs> and, then you'll, and then you end up on NPR and your dad calls you up and says, Isa, you do the lingari. <laughs> True story. He heard me on NPR talking about dirty packy lingerie. I didn't have the words to tell my parents. I was at a job in IT, working at Google. I didn't know how to tell them I really wanted to be an actor. It's really tough, you guys, let's be honest. It's really tough and we're not given the tools, right? Because for us as Desis, we don't go to therapy like the rest of America does, where you learn the tools, right? That's where you learn the tools, we don't get that. So yeah, no, 
it was, it's, it was, it's hard. Like, there's no real answer, but look, pursue your passion. But please, Selena, chime yeah. in. I would say, although that's super valid, and I'm so sorry that happened. Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. Also, your parents are super supportive. No, no. My, my mom and my, my sister, everyone was very supportive, but originally my dad was not. And then when he saw me doing it, and he saw how much I loved it, and how much joy it brought me, and how much joy it brings other people, then he came around, and then he said, I will support you now, forever. And I want to see you pursue your dreams. My dad said he would support me after I was an NPR, <laughs> so you know. So prestige, prestige is the way to get your parents to okay. Well, also, be passionate, <laughs> go for it. Well, I think it's a really good point too, because, um, <laughs> The same story, I, I applied to film school without telling my parents too. <laughs> and then um, I got in and they, they appreciate it for the prestige. But um, it took a while um, to, to, to get them to come around. But the, pro the thing is that I've noticed with all of, if you really look at Hassan Minhaj and all these people, they still did it. Their parents weren't on board until they made it. Your parents just want you to be successful in life, that's all. I mean, that's really the, the key and um, to have the happiness. So I, I mean, uh, I, I mentor a lot of uh, students and I always have to tell them, you just have to do what you're passionate about and do it and they'll come along. But if you tell your, I mean, we say it's brown, but it's not, it's also every immigrant story. You tell, you tell them you're gonna go to the arts and they're like, no. And so you just have to be respectfully passionate about the drive that you want and then they'll come along. But they will say no continuously and you have to be able to take that. I need to tell you that someone from Mrs. Hellman's class is here tonight. Me? Who's Miss Hellman? Holman! Yes, Holman. <laughs> yes, okay. uh, yes. And yeah. and he or she is so proud of the strong, powerful, passionate woman you've become. Oh, thank you so much, Joan. <laughs> You're so sweet. <laughs> and since we're running out of time, I'm not going to be able to ask that question, but I'll give it to you. Here's what I'm going to ask. Do you have another project coming? Because if you don't, we can't wait to see it. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, I mean, all of us here, we all have projects that we're working on. I'm working about on a, a second feature about my childhood in Panama City, um, directing some, some films as well um, this coming year. Anyone else want to chime in? No. Yes, yeah, so many things, but please, you can follow us um, on all of the social medias, um, Americanish Film, also on Instagram, Twitter, just to keep track of where we're going. We have like 10 festivals coming up uh, where we're really, we want to do what's happening here in this room, show it to the people who we made this film for so we can build our audience and uh, yeah. Oh, also, audience award, people. Did you have yeah. your ballots? Yes, yes. We will, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, go ahead. Roy, you wanted no, to say No, I just something? wanted to say one thing. Uh, first, if you haven't read what's up there, please read it. Um, so if you liked or disliked, please post something about the movie. That's If you feel like the mission is aligned, please do it, because the impact obviously starts with you, not just uh, with the filmmakers. And um, if you do have time, it helps us a lot in terms of uh, distribution and getting picked up. Uh, there's a website called imdb.com. You might know it. And uh, if, you, if you just, <laughs> sorry, uh, if, you, if you just, you know, search for Americanish there, on the top right corner, there's going to be a section to rate the film. That goes very far, much farther than you think, and it takes you less than five seconds to do. So you can just write one word. I hate it. I love it. Nine stars. Don't give ten stars because the algorithm just messes up. Nine is the max. We'll take it. Is there going to be an Americanish too? We hate to let these characters go. We want to see what happens to them. Oh, T V. Where there's there we keep talking about this. Roy Roy really wants to turn this into a TV show. Four years ago. Yeah. Great yeah. idea. That. And you'll all come back for oh that was fast and it stopped suddenly. Americanish too. TV series. Hooray! But meanwhile, do all of those things. Be sure to vote for the Audience Award. And once again, let us thank all of these people for coming here tonight and sharing this beautiful Thank you, Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. I also want to give a quick shout out to the families who let us film in their homes. Yes. There's a couple of them here today. Done it without you. I really feel like this was a community effort. All of our friends, families, everyone in New York just kind of came through and like made this thing happen because we couldn't have done it without your help. So thank you. Yes. And thanks, thanks for the festival too for curating this film, having us here. This yes, is our New York City our pleasure. premiere. Yeah. <laughs>
And let me ask you to once again take the stairs down, go out, and crowd follow them, please. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You all. Thank you.